Okay, so Be'ezra Sashem, starting something new that will hopefully continue for the foreseeable future. We're going to be learning the Ramchal's Adir Bamarom together. Now, Adir Bamarom, written by the Ramchal, words, names that already demand weeks and weeks of conversation about who this tzaddik was, what this tzaddik was, what the tzaddik was poil in his short but powerful life, the writings of this tzaddik, the various stages that this tzaddik went through in his life, the remarkable attraction that he held for every zerim of Klai Yisrael imaginable, the tekifah sadas, the strength of character and the awareness of self and the power of self, which gave the Ramchal a direct permission to uncover a path towards redemption, that he believed in himself and his Torah enough, like the tzaddik Yisoyed Olam, that he was to believe that it was possible to bring redemption. And the Ramchal's short but very powerful life which rests at the secret of creation, Moshe Chaim, whose yard side is on the light of Yesoid, should be Yesoid, the or of the Tzaddik, Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David. This sugi of the Ramchal is a sugi we've never given Shirim on the Ramchal before, and this is not going to be a series of Shirim on the Ramchal, but the light of the Ramchal, the redemptive light of the life of the Ramchal, and the redemptive light that rests in the Torah of the Ramchal is something that I've been feeling more and more that I just absolutely need in order to survive. More and more. And so what I figured would be that in a time where the space of the Ijaraba, which we're going to see is the instability of existence, begins to be awoken, and a person searches and searches for that place to stand upon, what we know is Tzadik Ba'amunasa Yechia, that to take from the Amuna that the Tzadikim have, to borrow from that amuna, to have amuna in ourselves, to have amuna in a kaddish baruch to have amuna in the tzaddikim amitim throughout all of the generations. The tzaddikim amitim, Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David, Eliyahu Hanavi, Moshe Rabbeinu Raya Mahemna, and all of the different iterations down to and including each and every one of our own minds. This is what the Ramchal was trying to give to us. The Ramchal was trying to give to us a Masilas Yisharim, a clear and straightaway path to uncovering Ruach HaKodesh, the preparatory stage for Nevuah, the preparatory stage for bringing Moshe Rabbeinu back into Eretz Yisrael. For each and every person uncovering the Das of Moshe, which is the vision through the Aspaklaria de Nehoira, the clarified lens, which tells us that we can't see anything whatsoever other than faith. But the Ramchal gave us a direct path. 26 chapters, Kenegad Hashem Havaya, the Yud Kei Vav Kei, the secret of all things, Shavisa Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. The Ramchal gave us a direct path towards trying to be Masig, Again, what it means to believe in what our neshamas are capable of, what it means to believe in Mashiach Tzidkenu, what it means to believe that it is inherent within each and every one of our own spiritual lives, psychological lives, experiential lives, physical lives, upon which redemption rests. And that the story of each and every yid is the story of them uncovering the light of Moshe Rabbeinu from within their Mesilas Yisharim, the Mesilas Bilavavam, in that place of the lave, of the confusion, and the doubled nature of the heart, specifically there to build the pathways towards Eretz Yisrael, towards redemption. This was the path of the Ramchal and his Chabura. The path of the Ramchal and his Chabura was a path that was always paving the way for Mashiach. And we see this in the Ramchal's life, the mystical, redemptive life that the Ramchal had to hide, was forced to hide, historically speaking, because a light like this has to be B'tzinah. It has to be concealed. A light like this, a light like the Ramchal, could not have operated in a world where there was full revelation of that light. Why? Because the entire teachings of the Ramchal is to teach us how to grapple with concealment in this world and the necessity of concealment in this world for the sake of uncovering the true purpose of human experience, which is Bechira, the miracle of choice, which is upon which HaKadosh Baruch Hu is capable of revealing his full goodness, the ultimate truth of all reality, which is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Megala goodness over and over and over and over again. And the Ramchal teaches us this. The Ramchal reveals this to us. And it couldn't have been revealed in a new way. It had to be concealed. It had to be hidden. He wasn't allowed to write books in Aramaic. He wasn't allowed to write his Lashon HaZohar Svarim anymore. He was forced into concealment. He was forced. He was exiled. He was hated. His books were burnt. And his Rebbe knew and his Tzadikim understood, but the Ramchal was willing to take upon himself that suffering that Mashiach ben Yosef goes through for Klai Yisrael, as he understood explicitly when you read the letters of the Ramchal from that time period when he was in Amsterdam, prior to his trip to Eretz Yisrael, to Akko, where he died in his, in his young age, in his young but long, long life. That it's over there that Rabbi that that Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato starts referring to himself as Rabbi Akiva. He starts identifying himself in the life of Rabbi Akiva. That Kolmad Avir Rachman Latavavid and Gamzu Latoiva. 
and that all of the secrets of Zutar Vizuskara, the light of the Ramchal, is the light of Rabbi Akiva, is the light of Moshe Rabbeinu, is the light of the Tzadikim, is the light of each and every one of us who understands that in order to bring about the light of redemption, there is a necessary bypass that one must go through from within the spaces of concealment that allow for the unfolding of redemption itself. And the Torah of the Tzadikim is that they explained it to us so that now we can read their words and find that place within ourselves that connects to those words in order to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As the Ramchal wrote when he started writing his Giluyim, his Tikkunim Chadashim, all of the radical Svarim, the amazing Mashiach Tika Svarim that the Ramchal wrote, which are Baruch Hashem published in Mefursam Bechol Hayom, in clarified ways with beautiful additions, Machon Ramchal V'chulay. But the Ramchal's life was a life of, of an Or Zaru Al-Tzadik Lev Simcha. The light of the Sofei Tevos Rabbi Akiva, that life of the Ramchal. And it's specifically at the end of his life, when he finds himself stuck in concealment, that he gives us Mesil Sisharim, specifically in the scariest place of his life, when he was kicked out. It's there that he uncovers that light. The secret of the Ramchal's ability to reveal the light of the Mesil Sisharim, the Yishuf Adas of Hareini Hashem Darchacha, Salich Bami Secha. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu, show me your path. I'm going to walk in the truth of your ways. And allow my heart to unify itself with your truth. That secret that the Ramchal was giving us, it's specifically at the hardest place of his life that he's revealing that. It's in the concealment within the concealment that the Ramchal has to tell us that the most basic things, as he explains so famously in the introduction to Masil Susharim, that the most basic things are sometimes the deepest secrets in the world. And to provide and illuminate a path of simplicity and, and straightforward nature of Avedis Hashem is ultimately the deepest thing one can possibly do. That path of Mashiach ben Yosef, that path of the incoming Geula as well, the light of Rabbeinu Haram Chal. As the Nazir HaKadosh writes at the end of Kol HaNavuah, Oyrish Mashiach, the light of Mashiach, Ruch HaShel Ramchal Shruya Ala Tukufa Achroi Nabi Yisrael. The spirit of the Ramchal and his teachings rests upon the last iteration of Jewish history, in accordance with all of its various dreams, that the Ramchal spoke to each and every Zerim of Klai Yisrael. That he was, Isha Sheruach Bo, was the light of Moshe Rabbeinu. V'chein al dorinu v'hador sabayim, on our generation, says the Nazir, and on the incoming generations. Aleinu lilmud klas pichsei chachma, we have to learn the teachings of the Ramchal and the way that the Ramchal set it up in his yeshiva, that it shouldn't just be for the sake of limud anymore, it shouldn't just be for the sake of information, but rather it should be for the sake of the rectification of the Shechina HaKadosh, the revelation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's light from within the lower places, litikun kol Yisrael, to rectify all things. And furthermore, la'avoid l'fnei Hashem be'emmes u'betamim ba'av shlema. And in addition to the work that we have to do to bring the Shechina back up above and refine this world from all of the difficulty to uncover the light of Mashiach, we also have to find the secret of Avedis Hashem in accordance with the truth and simplicity and deep and full love. Without any desire towards any reward for the self. Says the Nazir, specifically in our generation, the generation of the beginning of redemption, Masas Nefesh Ramchal, which was the entire burden of the Ramchal's soul, the Allah Haya Shoyef Muschavin, all the Ramchal thought about was Geula. Rucha Shal Rabbeinu Moshe Chaim Lutzato, the Ruach of the Tzaddik, the Ramchal, Taifiya Aleinu, will express itself upon us down here, the Alkol Maskile Bnei Yisrael. And all of those who are searching for the paths, all of Kla Yisrael who are searching for the path, Hahigim Vitsaif of Or Tarasu, who learn his Torah. And find ascendancy through the neshama that Hakadosh Baruch Hu revealed, which is the neshama of the Ramchal. Haruach Hanavui, the prophetic spirit begins to arise. Reishis Chachmas Yisrael, the beginning of the inner audible sense that the Nazir was speaking about so much, the hearing, the inner hearing, the belief so much in each and every thought of the neshama to believe that I can bring Mashiach. Shatzarach Shaasid Lishchadesh Lofia Begula Yisrael Hashlema that will emerge and once again be renewed in the emergence of the full and complete redemption, externally and internally as well. Light of the Ramchal, we see in his earlier Svarim, in Tikkunim Chadashim, and the Tfilas of the Ramchal, the Ramchal understood that it was through his Torah that we were going to find redemption. Because ultimately the sum total of what the Ramchal's Torah is, is the three-stage process like we discussed in the previous year, of beginning, middle, and end. The beginning with the infinite, the middle with the finite, and the end with the return of the finite to the infinite to reveal that the infinite is so great it contains the finite and the infinite itself. 
that there's the Rosh, there's the Emsa, and there's the Sof. And the Rosh is Or Mufla Rimala, purified light, goodness, redemption, all things revealed. The Emsa is difficulty, all matters of concealment, all matters of struggle. And the Ramchal, more than anybody else, talks about Sitra Achra, talks about the other side, talks about evil, talks about the, the seemingly possibility of coming to terms with that evil might, God forbid, have some semblance of its own Koach, God forbid, which the Ramchal, through Das Tvunos and through all of his writings, comes to be Mazbir over and over and over, how there's nothing but Achdos, and all of the Koiches Ara are just like a Kelev on the leash of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, who utilizes that negativity to bring about the Ikr Tikkun, which is to be Mavarer Metzias from the difficulty itself. The Khalil of Achas, only because the Ramchal understands that there's no such thing as Ra or Sitra Achar or any difficulty that's devoid from the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, is he allowed to speak about it in such a way that almost makes it seem like it's mamish, something that could chas v'shalom be considered something far from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As the Ramchal is masbir this Nakuda over and over, that they think that I'm saying that there's some separate entity, God forbid. But in truth, it's only because I understand deeply and fundamentally that all things are contained within the Achdus Apashut of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and that the beginning, even though it breaks apart and melts into a middle that appears to deny it, if it returns back to itself, and even more so in the end, that's the Yichud HaResh of HaSefa. That's the Yichud HaResh of HaSefa, the, the unity between the beginning and the end, which reveals that the middle itself, the difficulty was all part and parcel of the revelation of the emergent redemption from within difficulty itself, and that the difficulty is a prerequisite for Metzias. The Ramchal said, I have permission to write this down. The Arizal didn't have permission to write the way I wrote, said the Ramchal, but I had permission to write this way, and we see it in every one of the Ramchal's svarim. There's Tfilas Ramchal. Tfilas Ramchal is simply every ounce of the Ramchal's koyach, Mashiach ben Yosef, is the element of kivoy, is hope. L'yishu'ascha kivisi Hashem. L'yishu'ascha kivisi Hashem, the possibility of redemption. Shimshon, Yaakov Avinu's desire to be Megal locates to his banav, even though it was sasami menu, but that hidden, non unknown knowledge that rests in the unknowability of the heart is the secret of Geula. That liba lefumya loigalia, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that Liba Lefumio Loigalia, there's no revelation from the mouth to the heart, meaning the heart knows something that the mouth can't express, and the mouth can express something that the heart doesn't know, and that's the secret of redemption, that we don't know when, but we know that it's going to be, but we don't know how, but we know that it's going to be. And ultimately in that place, the Ramchal comes to be Megala, that the singular koach that a person has is kivoy, is hope, hope in spite of all appearances, hope, desire, movement upwards, that the movement upwards and the hope upwards is not for the sake of a revelatory gift, but rather the hope is the gift itself. Hakol b'kivoy, the kav, everything is kivoy. The 515 tefilos that the Ramchal wrote, we live in a generation where we have a pocket version of tefilos Ramchal. The Torah of the Ramchal, like Rabbi Nachman claimed, like all of the tzaddikim said, to turn the Torah into tefillah, the Ramchal did it before and as well. And the Rabbi Nachman would tell people before they came to him to go and learn Masil Sisharim. And the Vilna Gaon, we know, was willing to walk. Had it been in the time of the Ramchal, he would have walked. He would have walked. All of the tzaddikim were moida and makia, the koyach of the Ramchal. Lashem shwe vachaloyma, schusi of ganaleinu, a tzaddik who sometimes people will claim, and I too am guilty of this for many years of my life, and talking about the Ramchal should be mamtik, every element of this. But the Ramchal was a tzaddik, he said, Oilam on every element, and there was no mistake with anything that he said. And the only mistakes that can be understood from the writings of the Ramchal are those that are as a result of human interpretation and the interpretation of certain ideas in the Ramchal, the interpretive metaphors and things that seem to take away from Kabbalah Sa'arizal, as the Leshem spends so much time describing, has absolutely nothing to do with Rabbeinu Moshe Chaim Lutzatu Shusya Ganalinu himself, the light of Mashiach ben Yosef, the Hisarius of Geulah Shlema, as the Leshem himself writes, that I publish these books. Don't tell me I have an issue with the Ramchal, Chas v'shalom. I have no issue with the Ramchal. Nobody could have an issue with the Ramchal. I have an issue with certain students in the generation who interpret the Ramchal to be saying something that even he's not saying, which has everything to do with the metaphoric literality of Kabbalah Sa'arizo. But everybody, Kuli Amalo Pligi, Rabbeinu Moshe Chaim Litzato, Schus Yaganalenu, is the light of Mashiach, is the light of Mashiach's Torah, is the Torah of Mashiach. It's the secret of yearning, it's the Yeshuas Chakivisi Hashem. Every one of these tfilos that the Ramchal writes ends with the Yeshuas Chakivisi Hashem. The Yeshuas Chakivisi Hashem. That light of Geula, that light of yearning for something that is not yet available because we still find ourselves in the Emsa, in the middle. But it's the point at which we understand that the middle must be revealed to be connected to the beginning and the end. 
That Saif Masa the Machshava Tchila, and that Mashahayo Hu Shiyi, the light of Moshe Rabbeinu, the light of Mashiach Tzukenu, and that Higi Asman to be entering into the place of the Hisayrus towards Mashiach Ben Yosef, Mashiach Ben David, and again the moments of redemption in our mind, the general moments of redemption for the Klal, the moments of redemption for all of existence on every level, for Shalom to be brought down into each and every packet of Milchama that exists within the self, within the world, within community, within interactions, that there has to be Shalom, the Das of Shalom, Yisoyed should be Yisoyed. The Sar Shalom, the light of Mashiach Zedkenu, which the Ramchal spoke so deeply about, Mashiach ben Yosef, Mashiach ben David, the apparent machlokas between the two of them, the unity that comes about by way of Elio Hanavi and the secret of Moshe Rabbeinu, who's Kailo trained Mashiachin, these secrets, the Tikkunim, the Tfilos of the Ramchal, the Svarim of the Ramchal, the little bit that we have of the Ramchal and from his Talmidim and his Chaverim. It's such a potent light, it's a light of redemption because the light of redemption is buried within his teachings themselves. And by uncovering the light of Rav Moshe Chaim, we're able to draw down the light of Moshe, the Das of Moshe, into Chaim, into a lived experience where we can all live with the Tkifa Sadas and the Yediya Shlema that everything is for the good, that everything is being revealed for the good and redemption is unfolding at every perpetual moment and that there will never be a graspability because the sixth millennia leads to the seventh, leads to the eighth, leads to the ninth, leads to the tenth, and that there will always be an ungraspability in that place of Amuna Shlema that the Ramchal brings us back to. And the Mesil Sisharim, which is just preparing the heart for Ruach HaKodesh. And in the Schus of the Ramchal, and the Schus of all of the Tzadikim, Ha'amitim, we should be Zoycha, to Gula Barachamim, to Gula Sadas Barachamim, in all manners of Gula. One of the Svarim that rests really at the core of anything that I know in Torah is the Ramchal's Adir Bamarom. Adir Bamarom is a unique safer amongst the Ramchal's writings in the sense that it still borders upon where the Ramchal was speaking in the language of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, in the Tikkunim and the Tvilos and the Zohar and Kohelis and the Zohar Tanyana and all of those redemptive projects of the Ramchal. And those were the elements that were concealed. Those were the elements that were ultimately hidden because the world was not capable of receiving that light yet. And so that gave us Das Tvunos, that gave us Klach Pisrei Chachma from the base Medrash of the Ramchal, that gave us Masil Sisharim, that gave us all of the Ramchal's other writings that we understand. But the Adir Bamarom is an in-between because it's a bridge between those two worlds. That Adir Bamarom, the Biur on the Ijarabah, is on the one hand the Razin, the Razin, the secrets of secrets that rests at the core of the Tikkunim and the project of what the Ramchal wanted, which was Mashiach Mamish. The deepest of the deep, Adir Bamarom is a mikvah bifne atzmo, and it's the most coherent presentation of the ideas that rest in a certain element of the Kesser expression of the Ijarabah, and there's none like it. Rav Menachem Mandel of Shklov's beer on the Idrizuta. Mayim Adirim is modeled after the Adir Bamarom. And we have the Meforshim, and we have all of the Tzaddikim who explain it, but what the Ramchal does in Adir Bamarom is takes the heights of the heights and draws it down to the lows of the lows and teaches us how to live in the middle, which connects the two. That every description of the, the loftiest elements of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's expressions in, in the infinite space of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's expression through the lens of Kesser is seen through the lens of history, is seen through the narrative structure of Torah, through the traumatic process of what it means to be a human being, revealing in a deep way the emotional capacity of a human being, the heart itself being that place where this light of the Torah of the Ramchal comes from, the Kivoy Halev, which is why it's connected so much to the Torah of Rabbi Nachman, because Rabbi Nachman's Torah is to be Mahapech, to live Ha'even, to live Basar, which is why Rabbeinu would send Talmidim to learn Mesil Sisharim before becoming Talmidim by him. Because it's the same light, it's the light of Yosayit should be Yosayit, it's the Moshe Chaim. And in this Sefer, in the Adir Bamarom, the Ramchal connects all of the different Ramim of his thinking. For me, it was a Sefer that rested at, at, at the core of so much understanding of the Sugyos to the limited degree that I understand anything. And so this Rav Yosef Spinner edition, again, in a future Sirim on the Ramchal, a future series of Sirim on the Ramchal, we'll talk about these Tzadikim. Shlita and the ones who are no longer alive, Rav Chaim Friedlander and all of the manuscript work which was necessary to bring out all of the Ksavim of the Ramchal. But this Adir Bamarom, this edition, which was the final printing based on a manuscript in Cincinnati, was the one that I had originally used for a very long time. And it's an incredible printing. My Sefer is actually missing it as blank pages. And then Rav Shariki of the Merachona Ramchal came out with this new edition, which is with footnotes and it has a full extent text, which is based on manuscript work. And so it's the same Sefer, but this edition has a clearer description and, and a way of reading the text in a far easier way, and that's what we're going to be working with. That 
the Ramchal Zadir Bamarom is a commentary on the Idra Rabba. And the Idra Rabba is a chilek of the Zohar HaKadosh, where Rashbi gathers his Talmidim together. And again, there's the Chavraya of Rashbi in each and every generation. Rashbi gathers his Chavraya together to really contemplate on the fact that the way that the world is functioning right now is nishtgit. It's not good. It can't do us for much longer. It's stuttering. It's stuttering like a top that's about to tumble over. It's stuttering. It's not dependent upon anything that's strong enough to hold it anymore. There's one pillar. There's simply one pillar that's holding it up. It's rooted in the world of tohu. There's an imbalance here, which is why the secret of balance, the mitkala of the tzafed yusa, which is the light of the gra, the ijarab is the light of the ramchal, the Idrizuta is the light of Rabbi Nachman and the Mishklov, and the light of the Groz and the Tzafid Ditznius, and they're all Mechubar Biachad, which is why the Torah of the Gro and the Torah of Ramchal, even though they're two different Zramim of interpretation of the Arizal, they're very much connected to one another in the way that Drush and Remez are connected to one another, Remez and Drush, as we've spoken about. But in the Idra Rabbah, what we find is Rashbi gathers his Chavar together and says that things are not stable right now. We have to understand how to stabilize. We have to understand how to stabilize, and permission is given to try and stabilize the world through the revelation of secrets that will bring comfort to the world at its foundations, it will bring comfort to the human being at the foundation of their heart, and it will bring nachas ruach to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And in this sefer, what Rav Moshe Chaim Lutzato does is he goes through a word-by-word -word interpretation of the ideas inherent within the, within the sefer. The ideas would be shirim upon shirim. What we're going to do is we're going to learn the sefer as it's written, and we're going to try to limit the commentary on it, but to give the connecting elements to make it intelligible for myself, for others who want to listen in. But most significantly, when we're talking about a sefer as holy as Adir Ba Marom, and this is true for any sefer, especially when it's written by a tzaddik or through a Kodesh, but really through the, the lens of the reader, any sefer can take on this type of significance. What we've spoken about so often that the neshama of the machaber is hidden within their svarim very often. That when a person is learning Torah, they should see to it as if the person who conveyed that piece of Torah is standing in front of them, which means that the reading of a book is not simply a process of information gathering, but rather it is a face-to-face -face encounter with the cipher that rests at the heart of the cipher. And it's truer by some tzaddikim. Those tzaddikim were makusher to the avoid of Mashiach, to the makusher to the avoid of Yesoid should be Yesoid, which is the A Sakosev, which is the pen that writes. Those tzaddikim were able to put themselves into their writings in a far greater way. The Leshem, the Ramchal, the Mitla Rebbe, Rabbi Nassim, Rabbi Nachman, Admor Chabad, the Gra, the Rashash. These tzaddikim whose svarim hold a chilek of the Ruach and the Neshama and the Panim of the tzaddik, that when you learn them, you're encountering the illumination of those words. Memela, that whether we understand what we're reading or not, the words have a power. The words have an impact. What we're doing is we're connecting ourselves to the light of the Rav Moshe Chaim Lutzato. And the ideas that go over our heads are sometimes more potent in the cultivation of the connection to that tzaddik because we see how far beyond our grasp the tzaddikim we're operating. And that ultimately all we can do is play around with the letters that they give us. And Be'ezra Hashem, Hashem Sefasai Tiftach, Ufiyogeti Lasecha, Yilratzen Emrifi Vehag Yonibi Lufanecha, Hashem Suri Vigo Ali, it should be for the sake of the Shekhinah Kadosh, it should be for the sake of Knesset Yisrael, for the sake of each and every heart that needs elevation in each and every moment, that the words of the Ramchal should be Machaya us and that they should give us Koyach and that they should bring us to the Geula Sanefesh, the Geula Sakla that we need so desperately. Zat de Zayar HaKadosh, Tanya. Amar Rabbi Shimon Chavraya. Rabbi Shimon said to the Chavraya, Ad Eimas Nesiv B'Kayim Adachad Samcha. How long is the world going to depend on one pillar? How long is the world going to be nearly toppling over without the proper balance of the left, right, and center? How long is it going to be imbalanced? How long is it going to feel that it's it's stuttering over the edge of nothingness? And the orientation that Rashbi was creating was that something is wrong and there needs to be a fixing here. That's what the tzaddikim do. They see something is wrong and how do we fix it? And so right now, the Ramchal is going to take us into the process of what Rashbi was trying to do and how Rashbi was going to fix the imbalance of the world at this point. How long is the world going to be standing upon one pillar? One of the most essential rectifications, the tools that enabled the world to kind of get to where it needs to get to, or the methods in which HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals himself in this world, was the Sefer HaZohar. 
you had Tzadikim, Rav Pinchas Karatzer, the Rebbe of Baruch. Rav Pinchas Karatzer would say, if I was born in a time prior to the Zohar HaKadosh, I would not have been able to survive for another minute. And the Rebbe of Baruch would thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu every day while dancing with the Zohar HaKadosh, saying, thank you, thank you, because without your Zohar, I wouldn't be alive. That the secret of the Zohar is one of the biggest tikkunim that were ever revealed, the panemius of the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu. How do we know this? The Zohar Kaddish itself brings down the praise of itself in many places. As we've spoken about in the past, the learning of the Zohar Kaddish is not only is it redemption itself, but it is a preparatory stage to bring about the redemption. To bring about the, the salvation, the crown of salvation for Kla Yisrael. And this idea is explained in numerous places in the Chelek of Raya Mehemna, the Chelek of Moshe Rabbeinu in the Zohar HaKadosh, Ubitikunim in the Torah of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Kama V'Kama Pamim, the redemptive power of the Zohar HaKadosh, V'Gam Po B'Parshas Naso, and in Parshas Naso as well, as it says, Begin the Asidin Yisrael L'Taimam Me'ilana D'Chaya De'ihu Hai Sefer HaZohar, because in the future, Klai Yisrael are going to come to find a taste from the Tree of Life, which is the Book of the Zohar, Yafkun Me'i Min Galus Berachme, that the learning of the Zohar, the learning of the Ijarabah, has the capacity to be ma'ira ge'ula birachamim. It takes us out through compassion. It takes us out without pain. It takes us out without difficulty. It allows us to become okay with ourselves. That's what the Zohar HaKadosh does for us. It's redemption itself. V'ha'inyin hazeh, and Zakhtar Amchal, this idea that the Zohar HaKadosh is a tool that's needed for redemption, hu be'ikarim g'doylim me'ikari ha'chachma. It's one of the most fundamental principles when it comes to the principles of this wisdom. Ramchal's light was to be able to create principles, first principles, and then be able to descend down into all of the various particularities and details, but always to maintain the sight of the first principles. So the Ramchal speaks in Ikarim G'daylim Meikari HaChachma. Not only is it a fundamental need for us to understand the power and the redemptive power of the Zohar, but it's also rooted in the Hanhaga through which HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals himself throughout history. There's the shape of how HaKadosh Baruch Hu expresses himself, which is the Seder Ashtalshalus, as the Arizal describes it, and Leshem sees this as the Partsufim and all of the different interacting parts. And then there's the Hanhaga, which is the way that we experience it, through Das Tachton, the way that we encounter HaKadosh Baruch Hu's expression in this world, the way we encounter HaKadosh Baruch Hu's revelation through the Partsufim Kav Yechol, through his Midos, and how we encounter the Hanhagos of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now, obviously, talking about the Hanhaga of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how he relates to us, is not to deny the reality of the fact that there is a basic structure that exists, which is the Torah of the Arizal. But what the Ramchal was giving us is the way that it appears to us. So the Zohar HaKadosh and its power has to be understood as a fundamental principle in this Chachma, and it's also rooted in the depth of the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu engages with reality. Asher hichin upayel ha'adon ha'yachid al amo va'anachlaso, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is already prepared and already created for his nation, that the Zohar HaKadosh and the light of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is one of the tikkunim, one of the pre-existing pathways that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has created in reality that ensures and enables Klai Yisrael to go from the point that they're at towards the point of the destination, which is the intended perspective of reality from the first thought itself. Soif Masiv Moshav Atchila. The path is the Zohar HaKadosh. The Gesher Tzar Ma'oid Ma'oid is the path of how we get from the middle of being stuck in the middle towards the revelation of the end that every part of the middle was just the revelation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's goodness like the light of Rabbi Akiva which is what the Ramchal says over and over where he says Samcheinu Kimoy Sanu that gladden us like the days of our, str our struggle because we're going to come to see that every ounce of struggle the middle which seems to be devoid of the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's revelation is ultimately going to be subsumed by being revealed to nothing other than a passageway towards the end, which reveals that it was always connected to the beginning itself. And a person has to know, Before we can understand the purpose of the Zohar Kadosh and the tools that need fixing, and how to use the tools that can fix, first, like any usage of a tool, we have to understand what's broken. We have to understand what was missing in exile, what is missing in exile. And what is necessary, what processes of fixing are necessary 
in order to bring us back to the way things were in the beginning. And when David Malka Mashiach spoke about this or contemplated this question of what's missing, what's missing in order to understand the medicines that are available to us and how to use them properly. And the medicine here that the Ramchal is describing is the Sefer HaZohar, the Idra Rabba, the depth of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's mind. And when David HaMelech thought about this, and understood that, wow, when I contemplate exile, says David HaMelech, there are fundamental things missing. There are fundamental things missing. David HaMelech would break himself and he would say, We no longer see the signs and there is no longer the prophetic spirit. And there's nobody amongst us who knows anything whatsoever. That was the expression of David Melech. What was missing was the nevuah. What was missing was the innermost certainty that emerges into the heart of each and every yid when they encounter the power of themselves and the Ruach HaKodesh, as the Nazir was hinting to, that emerges through them at each and every moment. That's what's missing in exile. For there has been a tremendous, tremendous deficiency and loss of a tremendous chachma that has been lost from Klai Yisrael in exile. The Razal Amru and Chazal have told us Miyom Shacharav Beis Hamikdash from the day that the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed, Sharu Chachmaya Lemehave Kesafria, that the Chachamim were closed off, Vahaya Hamishayre Mispalul Alzois VaOimer, and the Mishayre the Mishayre would cry out upon this and he would scream out An Masay Eloyim Yecharif Tsar, how long Hakadosh Baruch Hu are you going to bring out the enemy? Yinaitz Oyev Shimcha the Natsach. And so what the Ramchal is hinting at at this point, what the Ramchal is hinting at is that when we could come to understand what was missing in Gullus, what is missing in Gullus, the chilek of Nevuah, the chilek of Oiseseinu lo ra'inu, the chisaron of the Yediyah Shlema of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's goodness at this moment, the inner audio logic that tells us Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad that allows the mind to close its eyes and believe that everything is good, that's what's missing. And it's through the light of the Zohar HaKadosh and what this chilek of the Zohar HaKadosh is going to reveal to us, what the Ijarab is going to reveal to us, that we're going to uncover the path towards Gula. Because the Ijarab is going to provide us with the ability to understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu appears Kavyachal in a certain way because that's how he decided to create himself with all of these different concepts and partsufim. And there's a tremendous void that apparently exists between creation and the creator. But by understanding the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has his Hanhagos, we can uncover those Hanhagos within ourselves and we can connect to the way that HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs the world. And in that way, we can connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the secret of Mesilas Yisharim, of refining the self itself to get to the place of Ruach HaKadosh Mamish. And to end with a tefillah of the Ramchal, just as we embark upon this new process of learning the Sefer of Adir Bamarum together, Be'ez Rosh Hashem, we'll look at tefillah's Matar, which is 249. The Ramchal writes as follows, El echad yachad umiyuchad, Hare anu aniyim ve'avyoinim ba'avur ha'sha'arim shal or ha'elyon shaninalu aleinu. Rabbi Nishleilam, we are impoverished, we are destitute as a result of the gates of light that have been closed in front of us. And we don't know the pathways, the secret pathways, or the pathways of the uh, elevated secrets that would enable us to walk upon this path. And on us it's said that impoverishment and destitution has taken away everything from Kal Yisrael. Ribain Kalei Lamim, Master of all worlds, Manasev Ein Anu Yoidim Mala Asais. What should we do? We don't know what to do. Like the Ramchal said in the beginning of, Adir, of the Adir Bamarom, that the Iker Chisaron in Golus is that we don't know. Va'at Machaletz Ani Be'enyo. And now you're making it even more difficult for us. Hari Anu Shoifchim Libenu Lefanecha. We are crying out to you. We are pouring out our heart in front of you. That you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, are going to take our words, even though we don't know anything, and you're going to take them, and you're going to allow them to be the tikkunim that need to take place. 
like a child who screams out without knowing what they're saying. The parent has the capacity of gathering together the jumbled letters to make some sense or thematizable notions and to take that and to love it. You yourself has said, The impoverished one cries out, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you hear. Rabbi Nishlelem, you hear from within the cries that are inaudible and that have no meaning whatsoever. You hear from within our cries what needs to be fixed. From within the difficulty, from within the struggle and the pain that we find ourselves in, let us find salvation. That it was written that there was a difficult time for Yaakov and it's from there that he finds salvation as the Ramchal more than anyone has revealed. It's Dafka from there. It's not that there was a difficulty and then we were saved and okay, the difficulty was erased. It's from within the difficulty itself, from within the middle that appears to be devoid and disconnected from the light of the beginning and the light of the end, that turns out to be the Yeshua itself. Pasuk says in Yirmiyah that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, from all of my difficulty, you will bring salvation, you will redeem me. Echad yachad umiyuchad, biyuchudcha anu baitchim. Rabbanu Shleilam, on your unity we placed our trust. And we yearn, we yearn for your truth. We yearn to uncover the true elements of what it means to be connected to you, Rabbanu Shleilam, which is the revelation that I have kivoy to you. Answer us with your unity, Rabbanu Shleilam. Don't let us be ashamed, don't let us be exhausted because we've placed our trust in you. The Yeshua'scha kivisi Hashem. Rabbi Nishlaylam, it's towards your salvation that I'm yearning. We don't know what we mean. We don't know what the words mean. We don't know any possibility of what the Ramchal may have meant when he wrote these words. But ultimately, we have our ability to say the words, Bezr Hashem. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu will take every ounce of the words that move in our minds and our hearts as a result of these sugyos amukos of the Sefer Kadosh v'noira adir b'marom, and Hakadosh Baruch Hu should take it and be makabel it as a tefila to be ma'ira all of the tikkunim that each and every one of us need, and all of the tikkunim that all of the tzaddikim yisadu elam throughout the history of generations down to our generation are capable of bringing about redemption and goodness for Klai Yisrael be'ezras Hashem.